contractors need to have a good understanding so they can help educate not only them, their employees, but as well as their customers and those that are gonna be doing servicing on the equipment. So this moves us into topic number four today. And for the past few editions of the NEC code, we have heard about new requirements, adding line side barriers with new service equipment. Chad, I wanna go to you again here, and, and I want you to explain for our audience how the NEC change for certain feeder installations have been impacted. Yeah, thanks Kelly. So in 215.15, we have a new requirement for feeder barriers. Now this is very specific, so we probably have to get a little bit into the technical details here because it has to do with feeder tap conductors or equipment rather that is fed from feeder tap conductors or transformer secondary tap conductors. And again, I think as Kelly mentioned, we would agree that there are, there are installations where this is difficult to turn off the main feeder. So you've tapped a main feeder or you've tapped the secondary of a transformer supply equipment. And those are some cases where maybe an energized work situation might, might actually come into play. And so these line side barriers, you know, they provide protection against inadvertent contact with uninsulated energized live bus and those terminations. So if we think about this equipment, the disconnect in this equipment, we're talking about the line side of that disconnect. I know a lot of times we think about the service when we talk about line side, but this is actually a feeder. And I think that uh, it's really important in the specific equipment, we have switchboards, switch gear, motor control centers, and panel boards specifically mentioned here as requirements to make sure that when that disconnect for those products is in the open position, you have some type of inadvertent contact protection. So Toby, talk to us about how this mirrors what's in 230.62C for services. Yeah, I think uh, if we look at 230.62C, it really helps clear this up. And if we look at the history of 230.62, we see in 2017 NEC, they added panel boards, and in the 2020, they included all service entrance rated equipment. Yeah, and, the, and these feeder taps, Chad, that you're describing, uh, transformer secondary conductors that terminate in these panel boards, switch gear, switch boards, or motor control centers, they pose the same hazard that Toby was talking about in the service equipment. They're infeasible to de-energize, which is one of the justifications for energized work in NFPA 70E, and providing that, that insulation barrier, um, you know, it goes a long way in preventing uh, what we would call like a human error mistake that causes an arc flash incident. You know, you think back to when you worked in the field, how many times do you drop a screwdriver in a piece of equipment? And now having these insulated barriers in place will help protect from a, an arc flash occurrence uh, happening. It's also important to remember that these barriers are not in lieu of any type of hazard or risk assessment, that there's still PPE that's gonna be required as well. Yeah, that's a great point, Kyle, because we have three main electrical hazards, right? Electric shock, arc flash, arc blast, and this really addresses enhanced protection for electric shock, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It does do some risk uh, uh, you know, abatement for potential arc flash. But when we think about this barrier, in, in particularly in large equipment such as switchboards and switch gear, it only comes into play in those uh, sections of equipment where you have load terminations. So if we think about large equipment such as switchboards or switch gear or other custom configurations where maybe you have bust into that disconnect and bust out and there's no load, load terminations in those sections, I just wanna make sure everyone's aware that, um, that you wouldn't have barriers in that equipment, right? And as Toby mentioned, for a really long time, we had a requirement in Article 408 for switchboards and switch gear. And then 2017, we expanded a little bit. And then 2020, we opened up to all service equipment. But the large equipment sometimes accomplishes this inadvertent contact by distance. In other words, distance within the enclosure because these are really large pieces of equipment. And where those load terminations are, it may not be reasonably probable that you could have inadvertent contact. Um, obviously, if you're doing other type of work, then you need to have the proper workplace uh, permissions to do that. So I think that um, there's a tie here between all of these and how that fits together. And I think your point's well said about how this um, enhances worker safety. Yeah, and just, just to reiterate, it's important to, to understand that these barriers are not necessarily the end all be all from a risk management standpoint or a risk assessment standpoint. Still need to con, you know, consult NFPA 70 and make sure that we're assessing the hazards and donning the PPE when necessary. 
Yeah, as contractors, we need to understand the limitations of this protection, right? It's mainly a shock protection. We still have our other two major uh, hazards is arc flash and arc blast.